and your host this week, it's Kalen. What's up, man? What up? Can they see us while we're waiting? No. Or no? Oh, no. You ask this every single week. Every single week, you're like, can they <laughs> see us? And it's like, no, bruh. Do they, can they see us now? They can see us yes. now. We are live on Twitch. We are live to <clears> three <throat> people on the Twitchosphere. What up, everyone? I'm taking over the reins today. And today, we're asking, hey, did you see this one? James Dean. The movie. It's incredible that you own a copy of that on physical. Why is how that many, incredible? Because how many made for TV? Isn't movies? it a TV movie? Yeah, how many made for TV movies did they, like did they bother? Oh, to make uh, that's true. That's a good point. Um, that's a good question, which brings me to our first category. How were you guys introduced to this movie? Um, I think I started with Jason last time I did one. So Steven, I'll let you start this time. I mean, introduce is a, is a pretty broad question. Um, <laughs> I, I've been aware of this movie's existence for a long time and I'm sure I've seen snippets of it here and there. And it's been mentioned on podcasts that I listen to as a testament to James Franco's acting ability, um, as well as, you know, a, fairly well-regarded documentation of <clears throat> his life but in terms of the first time i watched it yesterday <laughs> yesterday was the first time i watched it and uh yeah so i i mean i've been aware of it for a long time but i i'm sure we'll get into it at some point during the talk don't really like biopics all that much so uh it's not something that ever jumped out as me uh, to me as something that i'm like i gotta watch this and even when it was on tv like the bits and pieces that i would see it was like not only do i not gotta watch this i don't want to watch this <laughs> so i uh just never watched it but now i've seen it beginning to end beautiful well i'm glad that i could help uh bring this into your life and we can't wait to hear your thoughts and feelings but before we do jason would you uh uh, enlighten us with uh, your introduction. Are you ready me. to be enlightened? I'm in, yes, I'm ready. I knew that Walter Matthau was a character in this movie. I knew that okay. him and James Dean were best buds in this movie. Thought that they had a uh, like a gay subplot. So, spoilers, they don't really. And I've seen that scene where they're at the cattle call. I, that scene I have seen. Um, and this movie actually taught me... Um, sorry, Jason. You said Walter Matthau. Uh, it wasn't Wal uh, the, the other one? I think you mean Martin Landau. <laughs> Martin Landau. <laughs> Not Walter Matthau. Martin Walter Landau. Matthau is one of the grumpy old men. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's, okay, sorry. Sorry. Martin Landau. Um, and this... I actually thought that uh, James Dean died in the Hollywood Hills... Uh, racing his car, but he, he, we learn in this film that he was actually on his way to race his car, and some shit just fucking happened by accident. So, um, I remember when it came out, I remember thinking, like, man, this James Franco kid can really, really got some acting chops, but I never saw this. Always thought it was in theaters, but it turns out it was a TV movie, allegedly. And that's pretty much my that's pretty much my long storied history with this movie. I uh, I watched it today, and um, it's one of the first. I was saying to you guys, it's one of the first movies we've done where I couldn't put it down. Like I just wanted. I was to, excited to read that. Like sometimes I'll watch a movie, and it's not bad, but I'm just like I gotta watch this in chunks. You know, you know what I mean. It's just the way that I consume media. I know you guys have your issues with that. You have your you should watch him. Yeah. Kalen's like, you should watch a movie in one sitting. And Steve's like, if you're doing it on your bricks, you can't retain all the knowledge. And I'm like, look, man, I'm a multitasker. I'm multifaceted. Multi it's not that I'm saying you can't uh, maintain the knowledge. It's that you can't maintain it, an emotional... Uh, like, movies are edited very specifically to make you feel emotions at specific points. And if you are cleansing that every 15 minutes, you're not getting the experience that they want you to experience. That's, That's my... 
that's point. fair. But something like Outland is a, is was would be hard for me to sit down and watch the whole thing start to finish. Okay, but Outland also kind of sucks. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> yes, I'm talking about movies that are meant to make you feel things at specific points. Like if you're just like if you imagine you got up and took a shower every 15 minutes. I do while watching a movie. I can't deal <laughs> That's with kind of what your brain. You're washing your brain. I can't anyway, deal sorry, with day to day life, interrupt. so I get up and shower. No, I. Look, my point is, I'll get to my actual review of this movie. It's not going to be favorable as far as movies go. But as far as TV movies go, it doesn't get much better than this, honestly. It was like, it was tele- it was television, and I love television. I feel like that's no excuse. I'm okay. curious as to, like, do you know why... Like, was there some that captivated you or whatever? Like, some that kind of kept you hooked or something? Or, like, do you have a reason as to why? I think it's that ever since we watched uh, Rebel Without a Cause uh, mm-hmm. last year, Steve, you weren't here for that, but I think we should do another James oh, Dean Oh, okay. This makes more sense to me. I'm like, why the fuck are we watching a James Dean biopic when it, we've never watched a James Dean movie? It's tied, it's, it, it's tied to the old, hey, did you see this one, a, okay. a little bit. Um, makes more sense now. We yeah. had a, me and, it was one of mine and Kalen's, like, favorite pre-Steve episodes. Like, we talked about, we did it on, like, a Friday night. I think we talked about it for, like, three hours because it was, like, you know, we were just ha- we were just shooting this shit on Instagram, kind of those days. That's not one of the videos we lost, was it? Uh, I don't think so. It's it's. I think I've got that. Cool. I think it might be on my. I think it was on my. It's on Instagram. your personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's lost to the sands of time, then whatever. Maybe we just do trouble without a cause again. But I would like to watch um, that one with the with the scene. On with the, the oil, the, I want to see the oil one. <laughs> well, I do want to see no, the oil East one. East of Eden. East of, East Eden. of Eden. Yeah, I would watch yeah. East of Eden probably. Uh, but anyway, um, I have a connection to uh, Rebel Without a Cause. So this movie, I was just like, what happened next in his career? And all the <laughs> people that keep popping up, as I was, as they were popping up, I was reading about them too. So I was mm-hmm. like reading about his history, and that's part of my. That's part of why I think that's part of my review of this movie and my critique of, of this particular thing, um, which we'll get into. So back to Beautiful. you cage, the cage, well, thank you. rage in the cage. The, so <clears throat> I was trying to remember the timeline of how, uh, all of these movies kind of came into my life. Um, I know that this movie specifically was a random HMV find. Like I was like like I've mentioned before, like I would just every once in a while go to HMV, and um, you know a cover stands out, and I was like, "Ooh, let me check that out" or whatever, based on the you know either the actor or uh, in this case, like James Dean has like a mythos around him that I was you know familiar with. I'm pretty sure this was the springboard, though. I saw this first, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I got to see these other movies," and then I got Rebel. Uh, East and uh, Giant. Um, but this would have been probably around a little more than 10 years ago, like, like probably BP days, in around BP days, or shortly I after BP Boston days. Pizza 15 years ago. We're yeah, I think now. I left I left there like 10 years ago, though. Oh, yes, you stayed there for quite a while after, right? Yeah. Um, That's right, so this Steve, was, a little yeah. bit of our personal history personal life history which i know how you long love. did you guys work there for and how there many long times like were you not there three for? years or four years it was a fun time we had a solid crew at one point it's true yeah i know you've mentioned it one thousand times while we're talking about movies on this podcast we used to party real hard the bars in halifax don't i close. don't give a fuck <laughs> talk about james dean the bars, <laughs> clo- the bars don't close in halifax till like 3 30 we go to Just because the our bars last longer. Cars, That's our cars I went to a wedding on the weekend. You guys want to hear about that? It was a great wedding. All my friends were there who you never You look met. really cute in the pictures that you sent. You look no, cute thanks. in them. Right. Thank you. You, you look Danny good. Looked, look. You and Danny looked at smoke show as I, as I now say. Yeah, you look good. I heard you killed it. Oh, From yeah, you. my speech? I was, I, I ruled. As Shut up, Steve. I don't want to hear about your speeches. Oh, no, I went up there and all, <laughs> everybody, all the other speeches were family members and all of them were like, we can't wait for babies. Oh, babies, I babies. I hate so that I shit. went up and I had my glass and I was banging it with a, a fork. No, a spoon. I didn't even grab a knife. Literally? And I was banging it and I was like, babies, babies, babies. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then I after and then I stopped and I said, just kidding, only if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can force you to have a baby. So I gave a little pushback. But yeah. Anyway. I, James Dean. I think some states in the States man. would <laughs> Good looking guy. What's not to like? And James Franco uh, I think did a very good job in the role. Um I mean, I'm not too because sure how much I would like say he looks hotter version of James Dean in this movie. <laughs> They're like, that's he, yeah, someone who well, looks basically just like him, but weird. hotter. I, I think the the one of the the things that he has going for him is that he's he's a weird person as well. Has like different kind mm-hmm. of uh, um, that one was of the, the that was the casting choice 100 percent because Freaks and Geeks showed yeah. him to be basically James Dean in that era, and if somebody was like James Dean biopic, let's do it. But put it on. I looked it up, and it was on TNT. That explains the uh, shoddy <laughs> worksmanship on the production of this thing. I think the production is fine, to be honest. It looks, it looks like it looks like a TV show. It looks like a TV show. It's all. It's, are you, did your guys? It's all I'm saying. <clears throat> I've got more to say about that. Full screen. Though. Mine was full screen. I, I watched it, it on. Right. Maybe it? Jason watched like a weird version of it. No, I watched it on YouTube. His had like the TNT in the corner, and that's why I kept thinking it was like. <laughs> No, he's it, like, oh, God. no, 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 it did. Like I'm watching this on TV. It had subtitles that I think were, um, were, uh, I didn't know what language it was. Uh, <laughs> it was on YouTube. It was in, uh, 480p, but every TV show was in 480p Jason. in 2001. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It you like watched it in quality. 480p and you're saying that it looks like shit. I'm like, oh, that's why it looks like no, mine was like a nice 1080p quality. It looked great. It's filmed on film. It's not filmed digitally. It looks good. Well, no, it was yeah, but it's still I mean the the people who are in it, I mean like the the production value, the sets. It looked like a Hallmark movie at best. Uh, a little bit higher. Of, like, the I've seen all the movies. era appropriate cars, and I'm like, and the costumes are great. I don't know, like it. Uh, you're yeah, like, very like, limited. Bragging like, on something that I'm like, that like, was actually the good part of the there movie. There were never for more me. than like two or three era appropriate cars. In there's the like parts where there's like hundreds of people in the street. When when the when the when when Mr. Warner's fucking Rolls Royce rolls up, you know <laughs> that they you know that they paid for it because they hold a shot on this car for like so long as it pulls up good two three seconds or something but that's also like it's it's meant to like escalate his character as a person who's like flamboyant and over the top and inflated on his own self which is then seconds later underlined when he's about to put his sneakers on the or not his sneakers <laughs> his shoes on like the dash and he's the like wood, that'll wood cost me two thousand dollars and then he takes his shoes off and does that the which sock. was one of my There's favorite the movie. yeah i, I did, don't i don't know. i did notice that since i assume mr warner is the of the warner brothers and then i was like yeah. i gotta look up to see if Jack warner brothers warner. owns uh the rights to the estate of james dean so he can get rebel without a cause and multiverses but no there's some law that they passed in hollywood <laughs> that's like you want james dean to be like me <laughs> like beating up bugs bunny like exactly it's perfect. i'm a rebel without a cause that would be the Imagine perfect I had that, one, red how coat, I'd be? that movie was in fucking black and white but that red coat is so iconic in my opinion rebel rebel was color yeah, was it color. was it technicolor it was like I, one of the how first did you yeah, know yeah. it was red because <laughs> the cover of the movie yeah, the yeah cover yeah. of the movie okay i've seen it in color but like technicolor is when they color it afterwards so they didn't film okay. it on what? color film I, they, like, okay I, it. I don't know i can't i see you in black and white with james bean behind you and i'm very confused <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's okay. We're allowed to get confused on this podcast. It happens every episode. I'm sorry. Look, I just, here's what I'll say. Here's what I want to, let me get this. Are we into the show now? Let me just tell you how I feel about this thing. This Uh, movie, this movie, there's no, there's like one other James Dean movie from like the eighties and they haven't made one since that I know of. And the way that I feel about when they make movies, that are supposed to be that's the movie for the era mm. put this shit in theaters and make it three hours long like the elvis movie or, or whatever i felt like it was it did a disservice to the mythos of james dean to cut away from the most interesting parts like opening night showing him in that play i i know there's a debate to be said for maybe that's not what the so you would have liked to have seen him like performing the play yeah, and also performing, me too. Actually, performing I was kind sex. of disappointed they didn't. Where it cuts right to him in the bar, like 
buying yeah. everyone a drink. I'm like, or maybe him going show up, that him going up to that apartment. And then I thought, I thought this movie heavily implied that he had bisexual, um, sort of Hollywood well that and things. every rumor since his death and well that like but that. i thought this movie leaned into that and i thought that was the thing about this movie and i was really interested to see the implications but the only implications are him that that creepy producer being like come on by to our swinger party at midnight and him being like okay and him there's going some... in and there's like two dudes kissing right or two dudes suggesting well, they're touching. not kissing they're just they're talking very closely touching. to one another they're standing in a in, in like a flirtatious in a way flirta- in a flirtatious way, I wanted to know what happened at that party. If if if, if there's a scene, well, that James could be, Dean, James I'm talking, James I'm, Bean fuck, I, I, fucking sucked a dick for sure. Well, that's what I'm saying. What I what I what I'm saying is, if this was Oscar bait, if this was a if this was a big production Oscar bait movie, 2001, you know that was that's like late. They could have had this big scene where he, it's heavily implied that he's bisexual and they have a an Oscar bait worthy scene involving that. Situation. Okay, but if they don't know that that happens for sure, then they can't put that in a movie. Exactly. They can't just toss that in there for Oscar bait if it's not something that has been because it's speculation. Like if they do that, okay. then that's 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 a like, good point. Inflammatory. Yeah. The other thing, the other thing that was good though, is him being like um, the the thing from the uh, the magazine from GQ or whatever. Where he's like, um, I'm not, I'm not. A homosexual, oh, a but I don't want to have one yeah. arm tied behind my back or whatever, which is like... I'm not going to go through life with one, one arm tied behind my back. Yeah. I, th- I think that might have been based on a real quote, probably. And yeah. I think that they could have done more with that in 2001, because it was a big time kind of, for, for gay I was a little bit annoyed recall. about the way that that scene was played, because it's, again, Jack Warner being like, you think... 14 and 15 year old girls want their fucking leading man to be a fucking homosexual or whatever a bisexual is that a term that we used back then probably not <laughs> probably not no, the uh, word had not been coined uh, yet in so fact like, the word and the, f the slur they, alino was used in this movie and i got a chuckle no, because was, of how ridiculous fagala fagala is like a word in i believe it's like a i believe it's a jewish term oh i thought he said a alino <laughs> He thought he said Fagolino. Yeah. He's a real yeah. Fagolino. I think I Fagola is like the term. Okay. Um, but maybe they did say Fagolino, and I just was like, oh yes, I've I've heard this word used in the past, um, both against me and for me. Walter Matthau said it, aka yeah, Walter Matthau <laughs> in his famous bisexual relationship with James Bean. Sorry guys, um, I got all everything is off my chest, and I wanted to just say that that about this movie. I think it could have been longer, well, uh, and it could have been in the theaters, I was, and it could have was... been. I think my the, to finish my point, I think this should have been more of a cultural, uh, like a more of a cultural milestone, and not just some shit on the same network as burn notice and well, WWE. I just wanted to respond to that scene that you were just talking about with the the, the newspaper or not the newspaper it was like gq or some shit yeah, <laughs> yeah one of those esquire and the thing that annoyed me about that scene is that the way he played it off with jack warner was that he was like i was just saying that it'd be fucking funky bro like he's just <laughs> yeah. he was like giggling like i <laughs> can't believe i said that but like it didn't confirm or deny anything, right? Which is like again, they don't know, so they cannot confirm or deny anything. And even though Jack right. Warner's pressing him for that information, you can't know. And that's one of the things that fucking annoys me so much about these goddamn biopics is they like take a, a speculative piece yeah. and they throw it, sprinkle it in there like it's gonna give you a fucking answer, and it's not because they don't know. They don't know. And they can't throw it in as any definitive information unless they found James Dean's half burnt diary in the trunk of his wrecked car and he's like i sucked so much dick <laughs> then you don't know you don't know it's okay so annoying. anyway um that's maybe okay then to go back to what i'm saying like maybe that's why they've never made a definitive james dean big big budget movie because they don't have enough information it's all well, based on like other people's bio like autobiographies yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, he died way too long, too young to be able to. He probably was still in a place of discomfort to talk about certain things. He died super duper young. <laughs> like he was he, was he 25 or 27? I forget. It was somewhere, so somewhere. 27 like that. is that age, but I think he was much younger than that because he was only on his like fourth movie. And I think he, when we first see him as like James Franco, he's like 
just out of high school. He's like 17 or 18. So he's probably like 24. He was 24. He does yeah. do a lot of work in a short span of time. The to your comment about the play, I also would have liked to see it. Uh, I'm assuming that they probably don't have any recordings of it, which maybe kind of like I'm sure they know what the play was about, so they could have probably done something. But I think the fact that they don't have any kind of footage is maybe kind of what led to no but you know they don't have any footage of him like threatening that director with the knife and being like you know i guess that's fair i'm a good actor he's like very (laughs) very convincing Um, also like that moment probably was not exactly how that happened (laughs) that's what what i'm saying that that, that was probably written in in a biography about him or it was probably written in somebody else's autobiography that's what i'm saying like they could have they could have taken some liberties and made a longer movie and put it in theaters and even without the even without the gay stuff even with the heavily implied bisexuality they could have (laughs) they could have just made it tug at your heartstrings and made you know you know, a lot of movies that are nominated aren't the best movies, you know, and I think that well, yeah, I think are the... Oscar bait to begin with. But I just think it did a disservice to just throw to make this more about James Franco than about James Dean. You know, they wanted to do the like we have this up and comer who's very similar. He's a weirdo actor who's very good at what he does. He looks like kind of looks like James Dean. Let's strike while the iron's hot and he's young. Um instead of maybe taking some more care i think that i not to say this movie is careless i think they didn't take the proper care for how iconic james dean is and how man i love rebel without a cause dude that movie i'm so happy to hear that it's stuck with me for a very long time he's such a weird meth he's like a prototype method actor i think we talked about that in that in the episode too like I, i think so yeah I thought you were gonna say meth actor, and I was he's like, a yeah, methamphetamine right. actor. He de- he <laughs> did the first <laughs> meth ever and used that to be a psychopath on screen. This movie Dude. opens with like, you know, like a, <laughs> and you're like, all right, it's sad. <laughs> I fucking get it. You're annoying. It's, and it's like with all the credits are coming up, and it's like an old timey set getting ready. And every single actor that comes up has an as underneath their name. Like every single one. Like usually they just put the names up and then you figure it out as you go. But every single actor that came up had an as this, as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, because we're supposed to know who all these fucking people are. And like you do. You're like, I think I know who that is. I, I do know who that is. For sure I know who that is. I know who that is. I know who that is. I don't know who the fuck that is. And... uh I found that annoying. <laughs> so it's like, okay. Fuck. It was this movie's cool. for this movie is for old people. Extremely like old people old are like, people. oh my god, the people that Judy Garland's in this. The people that this is for are all dead now, for sure. Hey, yeah, I no. think it was for me. I think that this movie would probably be very popular amongst my like parents. Parents were probably like, well, this is a good movie. I'll show it to my kids, and so my kids, my my parents would be very familiar with all this shit. Because, like, you know, when I was a kid, my mom was, like, like pushing Mary Poppins and Sound of Music and stuff on me all the time. Nice. But that didn't come out when she was, like, in her teen years. You know, that came out, like, just before she was born. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a thing where, like, the Goonies or Ghostbusters, for me, like, Ghostbusters was made before I was born, but I would most definitely show that to my kids. I was born because, in the And I'm super like... duper familiar with Dan Aykroyd and you know all the ghostbusters and like all of the movies around that era star wars came out dec a decade before i mean that's a little different because i mean ghostbusters is also still going around i'm trying to think of one now that i'm like what did they not make a legacy I was a karate for, kid but I there's love. a whole there's four no there's a tv seasons. show yeah, there's a four seasons that, and, and it's rehashing oh, no, they literally have so brought spoiled. back every single character from the movies oh, man. yeah basically like a reboot but in TV, and, but form. then in st- but then they have stand-in characters. Like there's a very prominent uh, black character who is kind of has the same story as even like the reboot. And then there's like multiple girl, like next Karate Kid girl characters, which was you know all the rage in the in the mid '90s. So you get everything. I can't think of anything that hasn't been like rebooted from the '80s in a similar way. You know? Yeah, and I mean they very rarely will reboot something from 
James Dean's era. And usually when they do, it's not a like a huge like there's no like musical score that everyone's like, oh my god, no. <laughs> he's back. You know, like when you hear like do 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 do, you're like, oh, it's the Ghostbusters, they've returned. <laughs> but like, you're not gonna hear it. And be like, oh my god, is this giant? Is this a remake of Giant? You know what a remake of Giant is? Is there will be blood, and yeah. it's so Ooh. good. Yeah. There will be blood <laughs> is one of the best movies I've ever seen in the history. Of I film. agree. PT PTA is the main. It's a movie that we cannot watch on this podcast because it's it's too high above our brains no, to be, how, be able what? to like talk about it properly. How would I take notes for a fucking two and a half hour like movie that's jam packed with shit? Like it's not just yeah. a movie you watch; it's a movie you watch multiple times and pick up new stuff. And it's not. Oh, yeah. You have to have it's a also podcast. a movie that you discuss around a fire yeah. for like six hours. You don't talk about it on a podcast for an hour and it's a half. For, it's for people who have a Paul Thomas Anderson podcast who do multiple sure. episodes yeah. about There Will Be yeah. Blood. You know? So now we're, t- we're going to talk about this specific character we're gonna for talk this about whole Act episode. One. Yeah. Oh <laughs> man, that might be a good month. We're only going to talk about Eli for this whole episode. I would hate that. I would. In this episode, we're going to talk only about drainage. Let's do one. <laughs> drainage. Let's do, a, let's do a year where every month is in one movie, and we just do twelve movies and really just pick it apart. One of my most favorite podcasts started that way, where they would do ten episodes of one movie, and they would just every week do do the same movie, and they would discuss a different aspect of that movie every week. Crazy. Yeah, we got a call for the movies that are that can afford that type of conversation. And, I won't and even tell you the right word I'm looking for. No, that. it's the Blank Check podcast. I talk about it all the time. It's my favorite podcast. And they discussed episode one, two, and three for 30 episodes, 10 episodes each leading up into The Force Awakens. And then they, <laughs> and then now they've become a legitimate podcast that has like real guests like Patton Oswald and Paul F. Tompkins. And, you know, they're they're good now. Uh, when they his started, name, his name not is so Tall F. Pompkins. Oh, Tall F. Pompkins. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Paul. <laughs> tall. Tall Paul. <laughs> there is he's tall. I'm sorry, Tall. Uh, I yeah. I um. I don't think I would be. I don't think I'm. Like I'm not stupid, but I don't think I'm smart enough to talk about film that way. I think that we could all talk about it competently. But we would have to have a very strict regiment, and we would have to talk, talk about specific aspects and not get sidetracked and be like, you know, have you ever uh, thought about abandoning your child? <laughs> we just talk about it. Right? I've abandoned well, my boy. Oh, I, have you ever I've thought about my being boy. finished? Yeah, I'm finished. So just to quickly get it out of the way, not uh, I want to I want to do this episode a little bit differently than previous episodes. Um, like movie backwards to off. forwards. <laughs> or, <laughs> movie ends the, well, the car crash. <laughs> the so it doesn't start off with him as a kid, but we we get the the shot of that movie that he's working on, and then it goes back to him as a kid and uh, and basically wanting his father's approval, and and then uh, you know we jump ahead to him uh, trying to. Uh, Get in, get into movies and or or Broadway and acting, etc. And then we I go through. I think that stories. opening scene is pretty important. Like, as a setup for a movie, it's quite important. And a setup for who James, like, if you didn't never knew who James Dean was, that pretty much encapsulates his acting style. But it also shows that, like, it, it makes him seem mysterious in a very clunky and obvious way. That's like even the people on set don't fucking get who this guy is, right? Like, he's working on this movie with this actor who is, you know, world renowned, famous actor, and he's like, yeah. he's trying to embarrass me out there, and like <laughs> James is just like, I'm just trying to leave the dog out there, like the money and stuff. You're like, oh my god, this is so weird. But he kind of looks like his brother. Uh, oh, I was Franco thinking, yeah, looks like, yeah, in that scene, kind of looks like uh, Dave. Uh, he, he looks like Dave. He blonded his hair. His hair yeah. is blonde. And, and he's younger. also like the age that Dave Franco stopped aging at in this yeah. movie. <laughs> when he when he was bit by a vampire. He was bit by a twink. Yeah. A twink. Forever twink syndrome. But I think it also shows his like, I'm not sure if rebelliousness is kind of the word, but like. Uh, you I don't know, believe like that shit for a second. I don't believe that he went in there until like I just fuck off and then like went out and he's like he needs to fucking hate me i'm like fuck they added this, this and then starts playing the flute yeah <laughs> they could have confirmed that with uh what's his name uh uh Kazan. 
They they might have been able to confirm that with Kazan. True. How he was probably long dead before well, they made this movie. <laughs> no, but like maybe Kazan already confirmed it through some other. Uh, oh, everybody in Hollywood is a fucking liar, and he probably realized <laughs> that James Dean was like super hot and like a charismatic enough to act, so he told that story to be like he's a brilliant actor. <laughs> well, <whatever>. I, <laughs> on my kind of research on James Dean, one of the things that I read about was. You could ask 10 different people about him and they would give you 10. You'd almost be like, you'd be hearing about 10 different people. Yeah. I like when they talk well. about who he was as a person and uh, which just kind of adds to his, his mysteriousness. Elia Kazan yeah. d- died in 2003. So he was still oh, alive. Oh. He was still alive. So he could have confirmed some out. of this. Well, yeah. how old was he, and did he have a deteriorative disease of the brain? Ninety-four. In <laughs> Ninety-four. Two thousand and one. Yeah. So he he's probably, probably like, hey, James Alzheimer's Bean was the Parkinson's. best. He's so hot. He's still alive. I talk to him all the time. Um, yeah. No, I. I mean, I. I don't mean to be demonstrative or uh, degenerative in any of the things that I say about James Dean, but like. This movie was very much a masturbatory piece of just like making him seem like he was the nicest fucking person on the planet. Even the moment where he like slaps his wife, they like, or not wife, but his want wife, they like immediately have like passionate sex afterwards. And like, so did he hit her? And if he yeah, did, like, was that, like cool, that or maybe that is the last like time they <laughs> slept together. It yeah, was, there's I, a lot of stuff in this movie that I'm like, that's one of the problems I have with a lot of these movies is like they often gloss over the stuff that will make them seem unredeemable as human beings. Yeah. Yes. And most human beings do have very bad stuff in their lives that if you were yeah. to show it on camera would make you immediately hate them and ha- you would have a very hard time getting on their side throughout the movie. And I hate it. <laughs> like, well, I bet what... you in that Elvis movie, they do not focus on the fact that he married a fucking 15 year old. No. So they, they probably don't I mean, linger a, on that There is a great long. balls of fire so You're saying movie. you want to see the shitty side too. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that I don't want to see movies about real people where they make them seem like they're gotcha. fucking angels and they're they're so creative and they're, they're just Let... an artist and they're just big and cool. So you don't like, want to see movies so about real people at all. Like, fuck this person. Let this me... person had millions and millions of dollars and he was a shithead and all he didn't these have millions examples of dollars of back then. It was only like, you know, thousands. He had one million dollars at food. least. Well, what? Yeah, there's that one that one one deal. Okay. Well, let me able, let me let me easy. speak on this a little bit because I do like some biopics. So do I. So do I. Sorry, I'm not saying I don't like all of them. I'm saying this that movie, I mostly hate most of them. This movie, <laughs> the way that the way the pacing is and the way that it's like the it's not the best writing and the way that it's a little bit overacted because it's mostly TV actors. It felt a little bit like Walk Hard, which is a parody of all. Of all, bio, well, of all bio, of all biopics, it's it's like Ray and Walk the Line, and um, Great Balls That's my of favorite Fire. biopic is Walk Hard. <clears throat> well, it's it, it's it's one of my favorite. Comedies. Ten thousand didgeridoos. It's yeah. exactly. It's fucking so it's good. It's not addictive. But I Sorry. couldn't I couldn't help but think of that throughout this, um, and I feel like that movie. This, this me seeing this. Some of the jokes in that that may have I didn't get I think come from this part of yeah. the well, it, his, his his relationship with his dad. No, I know it's literally that's that's Ray Charles, but a yeah, little but bit of that like died. the wrong kid dad, that kind of stuff, and just skipping from one thing to the next so fast. Like then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. Yeah, and I'd like to respond to this when you're done. Sorry. Well, all I was gonna say is that it kind of reminded me of that. But if you actually go and watch Walk Hard, that one pretty makes him seem like you know makes johnny cash seem like a pretty big dickhead the other thing i wanted to bring up about this movie having like a problem with making Wait, him seem walk like the line or walk hard what are you talking walk about? the line walk the line okay the, the, i was just wait were you, did you always mean walk the line no or? i meant walk hard when he was I talking about both yeah, yeah. Okay, was, okay. There, that's why i was confusing because yeah, like, walk yeah. the line specifically does make johnny yeah. cash out to be a bit of a dingle dingleberry but the ending. I think, those are the, I think that's when the toilet paper gets stuck to your. <laughs> Never mind. I wanted to make a joke uh, because he goes and talks to his dad at the end of this movie. He goes and talks to his dad, and his dad finally reveals to him, "Hey, 
uh, the reason why I was so cold to you is because your mother on her deathbed revealed to me that you may or may not be my biological child. And through this movie, I'm going, how did that dude produce fucking the most handsome man in the world, James Dean? <laughs> and and I know they're actors, whatever, but there must be some truth to this. But anyway, you get a very big redeeming scene between the father and between James Dean. And then the credits should have rolled. And I kept <laughs> I kept writing, oh, okay, so they're, they're cool now. And uh, James Dean died of old age in the 90s. Okay, perfect. Wait a second. Okay, so there's more here. Okay, um, so he goes and he, he, you know, he has this talk with, uh, with Mr. Warner. And then he lived, they have a nice moment, and he, li- he died of old age in the early 2000s. You know, and I kept making these little jokes in my notes because, you know just for me i wanted to bring it up on this podcast but uh the whole time i'm going this dude i up to this point i still think that he rage i thought that this scene where he talks to his dad went the other way he rages out and goes and drives his fucking his fucking spider off a cliff by accident in the hollywood hills i didn't realize that uh he just was r- driving down a highway it's wouldn't so wouldn't that have been more interesting as a story yes the unfortunate it's part so of is that sometimes people just get into a car accident and, and that's fucking part die. Of, that's part of what i'm saying and that kind of took the window to the sails of my james the mythos of james dean in my head and especially the way they built up they they did multiple moments in in the third act where they keep bringing this fucking car up and i was like yeah well, i mean yes. you know what would have been great interesting filmmaking would have been like if they had somehow found found a way to uh edited that last sort of like 15 minutes where it's showing little chunks of like four scenes all at once and just kind of jumping back to them and have that because like this whole movie is very intrusively invaded by music so have it be like a music video almost where they choose a piece of music doesn't have to be the wah, 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 wah. like just make get a song that exists a modern song even and like put it in there and have it cutting back between him being a shithead on the set that he doesn't want the giant set him arguing with studio heads him trying to get his dad to listen to him and him driving down that road and just keep like cutting between all of them and have it be this like sort of intense back and forth where you're trying to figure out what's going on and then it like ends with like the music gets calm and the car is driving and then it shows his dad being like and they like hug or whatever like in that property on the, the hills and then you know he hits the thing and then also make a fucking car crash into another yeah. car jesus christ we didn't it, get to see a car it crash was an Oscar movie like if it was a big theater movie they would have done something like that oh and they that... didn't have the budget to wreck that car for no, sure that's, just, they, that's why they didn't show it but, but that's part of my whole problem with this movie in general that it just it doesn't feel like it matters in the grand scheme of like filmmaking in in movies that go into the theaters but as a movie that was on television on TNT in 2001, it's f- dope. It's fucking... If I was like, oh, I guess I'll watch this James Dean movie. I'm fucking 16. Who cares? Or even if I was a little older, you know, if I'm 25, I guess I'll watch this thing on TV. It would have blown my hair back. And I'm 37 and a fan of James Dean. And I was a fan of certain elements of this movie insofar as comparing them to made-for-television film i guess is my point i also was upset with the movie for because i didn't know the story of him like his father maybe being like him being an illegitimate son like i didn't really know that but immediately at the beginning of the movie the dad leaves in the night and you hear him saying a bunch of shit that heavily heavy handed slapping you around in the face implies that he's not his son and then yeah. like it's underlined over and over and over throughout the movie and i'm like Ugh. like i know now like he thinks that this isn't his kid that's what the issue is that's the whole problem and like if they didn't put that if they just had her yelling at him at the beginning and didn't have him responding i would have been more intrigued and i wouldn't have solved the mystery at the beginning of the movie like when it was revealed i'm like yeah obviously like that's why he's such a shit dad like he's not the dad and he knows he's not the dad and that's why he's like a shitty dad he would have had way more uh feelings of responsibility if it was his son and he didn't have I, any and it was so I, I obvious i agree with that that's not always the case i think it was also that's a 
poor excuse okay. to not be a good dad. It is a poor excuse to not be a good dad, but I am upset with the movie for t- revealing that to me when it's supposed to be a reveal in the last 10 minutes. Of That's the movie. True. true. And I will say it was a different time. There was a lot more like toxic, like hardcore toxic masculinity surv- like surrounding those. Oh kinds yeah. Of things like in society, little kid, you know? little boys weren't allowed to hug their dads and shit back then. I had, I you was thinking, the yeah. And the the forties, I was thinking about during this movie, like, I'm a pretty I'm a pretty nerdy dude, and I'm into like nerd culture. And if my kid grew, if I had a kid and he grew up to be like a jock, would there be like <laughs> a would there be a paradigm shift? Is there a paradigm shift now, where people who like grew up being computer programmers or having kids who like are super into himbo culture because of social media and stuff, and they just like, I hate yeah. my fucking jock your, son your kid <laughs> rebels and he just wants to play just, hockey and you're like, Fuck! Yeah, yeah. like no you can't play hockey <laughs> no one in this house plays hockey hockey is the devil's is the <laughs> if it's first the yeah. hockey and then the devil we used to call it devil sticks in the 90s <laughs> no actually no, Dad, devil i sticks looked it up this, on the yes, internet i yeah. know <laughs> that's the joke Dad, I, actually i looked it up on the internet and devil sticks did come back while i while i was alive as well so we have that in common Dan, no kids playing sports in my home why do you put on a I'd like to accents? see that reverse role yeah. movie. Imagine you like you're you're you hear like the low bass from your child's bedroom upstairs and it's just like church hymns like, <laughs> blasting. No you're like, really oh no, no <laughs> this fucking kid found is. the Bible. Why do we have a Bible in the house? I keep Shit. my guns in my Bible. Anyway, that was a fun riff. What do you got next for us, Kalen? Well, oh. well, one of the notes I wrote down was daddy issues. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of daddy issue notes as well, but and they're like I keep coming back to it. Like every once in a while, I underline like, "Oh, the dad's back" in my notes, <laughs> and he's just as <laughs> shitty as he was before. Maybe shittier, perhaps. I kind of hated him constantly going back to his dad because it felt like um, that. There's no it's like Munchausen syndrome or whatever, or not Munchausen. What's the Stockholm? Stockholm, Stockholm a little no. bit. Yeah. Well, no, that, that no, it's like the opposite of Stockholm. Yeah, syndrome. it's like he just wanted his dad's <laughs> approval. That's a that's a pretty common like that's a pretty common trope but my problem with it is it doesn't there's no defined acts in this movie really it's just like one thing happens after another which i guess kind of reads that's probably because of commercials like t like because it was for tv it could have been they also it, like it in all... the early part of the movie they were giving you the the num- the dates like the like yeah. this is the year and they kind of just stopped <laughs> doing that throughout the movie they're like yeah it's fine now we don't need to keep doing this i just i like it i like movies that have more of a defined part there's no but that that said it's a biopic it's it's kind of kind of plays out like a book books bio auto not or sorry biographies don't really have acts it's like a biotic book it's like a biography <laughs> oh, what a book it's a biography uh, we don't have the thing that we usually run into where like somebody needs to say all the things that happen in this movie because it's just sort of like He's a well, kid. I mean, we, he's old. We, he's a, he's a middle of the movie, and then he's a kid, and it just it shows like four four or five scenes from his childhood. We, he's very close with yeah, his mom. Yeah, it shows that he's cancer. he's very into theatricality early on, and his dad is very cold and distant. But this is before his dad even knows that he's not the dad. So his he's dad all, was yeah. just like, "I got in the front I room. Well, I don't got time for." Yeah, he's like, "I'm trying to read the newspaper," and it's like, "Dad." Just watch him recite the poem for like a no, second. Like, actually, it's like fucking 30 seconds of your life. Man. During his Okay, you can have the front room. During yeah. his final monologue, he does say he does say so much that you know, when me and mother started dating and got married, there was a guy who she loved yeah. from high school that I don't know if they ever really ended up so it's it's implied that that this other guy was sort of part of part of it too so he that might yeah he probably always had an inclination or whatever but that's why she's like you know your dad's mad at me you know oh right 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 that's what i that's that's what i was relying on to be what the problem was because if if they show his dad to be a dick and then he's just a dick because of something he finds out after he's already been a dick that makes no sense but it's also that's true yeah uh he probably had a 
an inkling or a suspicion that this kid, especially when he's like, <laughs> or she, none of us are blonde and this kid's fucking blonde. Yeah, or she keeps uh, coming home at two o'clock in the morning fucking with her hair all messed up and like, I was just out at the bar. She's got hanging like with jizz Johnny all home. over her dress. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that scene from A Thousand Ways to Die or A Million Ways to Die or whatever it was. A Million Ways to Die in the West? Yeah. Where she, I think she has like stuff all over her face, and then oh, but they're not God, allowed yeah. to have marital sex or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one thing I really liked about this, and I'm curious, like I feel like if at like a, a, a an uh, an aspect of this probably happens in 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 filmmaking, but when uh, Kazan, or even when he's at the the film school, where actually no that doesn't really anyway so when kazan's like kind of like <laughs> give us your thoughts please stop canceling your thought you're about to say no this is great because i can tell that he hasn't drank or smoked any weed because we're getting we're getting i have it premium have it. premium just read, tonight thank you um but kazan encourages him to mess with the uh yes. the actor playing the father which was like just personally like it was like it, it kind of just like you put a little smile on my face or whatever and but two like i was like ooh. I bet people do that in real, like, you know what I mean? Like something along those lines to kind of get certain reactions and scenes to like get that, like get it more um, authentic. That's one, that's one thing yeah. I, I loved about this movie where you get a little bit of insight into the way movies yeah, they, are made. They can't know? really do it as much anymore. I mean, the way they did it in this movie, you could probably still get away with, but I know that in the seventies and early eighties, there were some directors that, had like lawsuits like thrown at them from yeah actors ridley and scott ridley scott got a like legitimate like reaction from the chest buster scene in alien well yeah, but there also are even crazier ones like uh the guy who directed uh the exorcist he would he would go up to actors and just like be like you're not getting it right you need to get it right this scene or else i'm going to find someone else to replace you and then he would just like slap them in the face and then walk away and go action and the guy would be like <laughs> and he'd be all like fucked up because he just got slapped in the face and he'd be like and then he would act the scene out and then the director would go up afterwards and be like i'm sorry i slapped you but i did it because i knew that if i did it would give a better performance and guess what that's right. the one we're using in the movie but like that's almost like a drill okay yeah, yeah but no like you can't <laughs> that's no, you can't okay. do it also, but Kalen's right like it is sort of it's the drill start well, behavior yeah but but those 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 things are, you know, you can't really do those things anymore, but you can sort of manipulate people. Like, you know, you hear about, like, Jared Leto. Like, well, I was just going to bring up Jared Leto. Like, they're just making this, like, curry shit yeah, inside the Yeah, they're making this shitty superhero movie that everybody knows is garbage just for money. And Jared Leto is like, I'm the Joker for real. I, I, here's a used condom <laughs> yeah. and a bat head. Like, fuck yeah. you, dude. Like, nobody cares <laughs> about your version of the Joker, and nobody, yeah. everybody's mad at you now. I made so you a chess off. set of all mouse skulls. Yeah, like... <laughs> Covered in hot sauce. What's your problem, bro? And then he's like, he was good in the be... little things. And the little things looks pretty good, and he's. I'm not sure a... that I'm sure that Jared Leto is good at a lot of he's a little good, things, he's but a he's good really bad at a lot of big things, things right? <laughs> like he is, he, he, you know, he's Oscar nominated. If not, has he won an Oscar? He's Oscar nominated. I don't think so. Did Listen, he... Jared Leto in the next couple of years is going to be the most canceled man well, on the planet Earth. Like thirteen-year-old like, she's... girls, he probably bangs constantly. That's hearsay. Don't sue me. I can't. I shouldn't say things like that live on. I said right? probably, and I also probably. all of the real-world accounts <laughs> that I've heard of people who've met him in real life. He's like I'll not favorable. You. They'll touch you. They've all said that his brother is very nice, but his brother is like his weird handler. Oh, it's Terry like, Leto. Yeah, <laughs> it's me, Terry Terrid Leto. <laughs> Torrid Leto. <laughs> He should be called Torrid. Torrid Leto. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's not talk about him. No, fuck Unless Torrid he's Leto. in a movie we review, which he's not in this. Yeah, because so we're doing Morpheus him. next week. Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of uh, cancelled individuals, I do want to sort of apologize to the people that we are doing a James Franco movie, but th- th- uh, this movie... He's not, he's not cancelled, he... cancelled. He just did some inappropriate shit that, like... I think I don't that, know if he ever really apologized for it, but like as far as I can tell, he hasn't like done a yeah, Weinstein or whatever. You know what you know? I mean? And and I think that he might have gotten a little too method actory about going back to college that time, and that's why he 
but I, st- I still how think was that he, method actory hey, he's a, he wishes he was you know james dean if, he's uh, like i'm gonna go to school and become a real filmmaker i'm gonna get real into the meta of filmmaking and become like i'm playing a director now. so even though <laughs> like i'm 40 like he's a i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna you know sexually harass 17 year olds online yeah oh, like a bro. but uh, he nothing. you know he didn't do anything that was like uh illegal i guess James but also Franco like he didn't, is not make, he didn't seem to flex his power on people as, yeah. as the, in the way that we think of it now but like at the same time i'm not defending his actions because no, it's gross he's gross he's um, a gross individual um but he also became famous very young yeah like i think the that might point in your life where it's like tiktok fame right you hear about all these tiktok fame people who get all their money like thrown at them at once and then they just like go insane <laughs> Yeah, that, like, Demi- okay. that D'Amelio family. And I just watched that Bling Ring um, special. Was it worth a watch? Worth eh, it's worth having on the background if you're doing something else, I guess. But it's kind of, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird and bad, but like it's popcorn tea. Like not not popcorn, but like it's, it's edutainment. It looks like edutainment. So it's like, this is easy to watch. My problem with it is uh it it has this weird contrast between the actor some of the actors who got robbed are like oh i was scared for my life like fuck you you have personal security and the act the people that were doing the robbing one one was one of the prototype um reality tv stars and her friend was like i uh yeah i wanted to be rich and famous and an actor and i wanted to get famous in hollywood uh but the second they put the, the the pressure on me i flipped and sold everybody out and the third, the third person in the bling ring, their their friend Rachel, she was like, "I am not going on this show and talking about it." So clearly, there's more to it. It's uh, it was kind of gross, but what I will say is that there is a very certain type of fame that started from this era, and <clears throat> uh, this Rachel person and Paris Hilton and the Kardashians, and it just kind of snowballs from there. That was that early two thousands. Early two thousands. And now you get to uh, Charlie. The D'Amelio family is a recent one because Charlie D'Amelio and I think her sister like just got TikTok famous, and that's exactly what Steve's talking about. They just throw millions and millions and millions of dollars at you all at once, and you fucking implode. You know, it happened to it, child stars in the '80s as well. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a, it's just. You a might even story. argue that it happened to James Dean, the biopic that we're talking about right now, because <laughs> exactly. he got really famous really fast and had lots of money really quickly. And he bought a fucking spider or whatever that race car is called. It was a cool man. That thing looked like a spaceship. It weighed one thousand pounds, which means anything that it like bumped into slightly, the whole thing would just accordion. Yeah. And yeah. the the car that it went up against was a fucking like modern at the time ford which is probably actually had like it was impl- made of swords <laughs> but it, ha- it probably had like it probably had early um like safety mechanisms built into it like it didn't have a, a right or a left yeah blinker. like when you would hit he it used like a, his hand no. to turn left <laughs> yeah yeah they didn't have blinkers yet but like when he when he crashed into it like a giant um, like a boxing glove came out on a spring, <laughs> like just no, that's, punched. That's Batman. The, that's Batman. The 60s oh, Batman. I thought that's was that like would be invented airbags. for another ten years. Like a bunch of them came out at all angles and just punched everything. By Lucius, your car. By, invented by Lucius Fox. Yeah. Who probably wasn't even invented yet. That either. sounds more like a Joker invention. <laughs> like boiling, like a bunch of. Anyway, that's true. But let's... it's Wayne Tech. It's Wayne Tech technology that was stolen from Wayne Tech. That's true, and he put boxing gloves on it and added sound effects. Quick Boing. side note: Titans is tight as fuck. Titans is oh dope. what with the swearing? It's low key, fucking crazy. It's crazy DC. The live action one, right? It's it's DC fan fiction. The show? It's they're doing this to all the DC fans. It's good. The show yeah, sucks. That show's terrible. Oh, it's not good. It's but it's better than Gotham, in my opinion. That's the show where Whoa, Batman comes down Gotham. and he Fuck thrashes Batman. ass. Yeah, he thrashes Remember ass. I, I haven't gotten to that yet, but uh, uh, Jason no, Todd was terrible. just introduced in like episode five. And I'm like, they're, that's what this is. They're just then doing you this already to- saw the thrashes ass part, and you it oh. flowed right over you like a seam semen river of bullshit. Was that, oh, is that in episode one? 
I don't know. I don't Jason... remember. Oh, you know what it is? It's probably the next scene where Jason Todd and Dick Grayson are in a car together. And... Yes, it Jason is. Todd... It is in that scene. Because Jason they're Todd... in a car together. Yes, they are. Because yeah. Jason Todd is like Batman rules, dude. Batman's cool with me coming and talk to you and like learning about like Robin. I'm and Robin. then you come down and you just like you like talk shit to them, and then Batman comes down and he starts thrashing ass. I'm like <laughs> so excited. What? Who says that? That's it's not too good. weird. It's not a good show. It's very easy to like not pay attention. Like I could be on my phone while it's on, kind of thing. But when they do little things, like Jason Todd just rolls up to fucking Dick Grayson, and he's like over it. He's like, I'm over all of this. I'm just a detective now. And Jason Todd's like, Hey, I'm the new Robin. I'm like, They're jerking. They're jerking me off. DC is jerking me off. It's wild to me that you love this show, but you hate the Aquaman movie. I don't hate oh. the Aquaman movie. Oh, there the was Aquaman, a movie that you said you hated that I was. Uh, the Aquaman movie is like the only good fucking DC. Oh, was it the Zyder Zyder cut? Oh, <laughs> it's the, the Snyder, Snyder cut. cut. I don't like the any of the Justice League, the original or the Snyder cut. I think it's all it's it's Zack Snyder jerking himself off. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, James shows. Dean. Yeah. I, you guys think back to a movie about jerking years? off people who think they're watching art, but it's actually just a bunch <laughs> of fucking bullshit. Uh yeah okay <laughs> sorry Caitlin what'd you say? Do you think it'd be hard to get clay out of your ears when you listen to your dad having sex with your stepmom? Yeah, I hated that scene too. That was gross. <laughs> I don't know what the point of that was. There's I don't think there's any point to it. Actually, actually you're right. That was like a filler. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of Forrest Gump a little bit. I think I think it, did, it was it... meant to like show the disrespect, I guess, from them, yeah. but like. At the same time, but also we already got side. that from all the other scenes that we see of the dad. We didn't need to hear him fucking that woman. Like it's, I don't know, didn't make. I like how she called him Winnie. It's like very kind of like a like effeminate nickname kind of. Well, isn't that his name? What's his name? Winton or something. Winton. Yeah. Not Winfrey. Hello. No, my it's name Winton. Is Winton. I'm Winton. the Winton man. AKA Winnie for with short. A, with a Winton play. Well, at the beginning, I heard the mom's calling him Win. And I was like, Geez. No, Winnie. I'm pretty sure she calls him Winnie. I'm talking about the very beginning when she's like, Don't leave me, Win. Don't leave oh. me. I'm not talking about the sex scene because the sex scene was gross. It was just like, Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, she, and you're like, Oh, Winnie. <laughs> Winnie, duh. Put it in my boom boom hole. <laughs> boom boom hole. I don't. I don't like that so much. Oh, I got a question. I got a question. I don't like Was boom boom hole shirt? at all. Actually, I canceled this podcast because of the because of boom boom hole. I hated that a lot. Hated well, I don't know what hole. hole that is. You decide. It's clearly the... it's clearly like a new hole in the perineum. Yeah. What what's uh what's like sailing apparel called? Sailing apparel? Like yeah. Was well, that striped know. shirt his or hers? Was it his or Christine's? I have no idea what you're talking about. He has a striped shirt with a really like wide neck hole that he's wearing when when Christine comes over with this actor studio letter, oh. and then the next day she's wearing it. Which that's I just to show that uh, they had sex. Well, see, that's the thing, right? Yes. But it looked better on her. You know, like it looked like it was made to fit her. Uh, I mean. It's just because you like looking at uh, potential breasts, you pervert. No. Is it no. just wide like that so you can have a put an ascot in there? <laughs> I don't know. I uh... keep saying more things that confuse Steve. I like to watch <laughs> his little. I like to watch his little fucking brain fry up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like you ask questions, and I'm like, what the? F- why is that a question? <laughs> Who fucking cares? It's that, probably that, his that's, shirt. That's it's table. probably so old because he's poor and he probably stretched out the neck hole because that's how clothes are. That's a good point. No, no, sure. it wasn't a stretched neck hole. It was like a, like a, it was the cut. The, it wasn't a circle. It was like an oval cut thing. Yeah, he ran out of clean co- clothes. So he cut a hole in a pillowcase and he stuck his fucking head through it. He made himself a boom boom hole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the answer to this question, and I don't care to answer it any further. Do you than think I, already I would have. have any success at becoming an actor if I pulled a knife on a director? No. 
I think that's if that happened for real. I think it happened one time, and it was the, that exact moment, and that's it. I don't. Yeah, but those guys were all weirdly horny for him too, yeah. which is weird. Where I'm like, okay, this is okay. Maybe curves. if James Franco himself did that for real, that would be the second time in the history of filmmaking that where that was <laughs> remotely allowed. That fucked me up a little bit. I was like, what? And then he saves face by being like, was well, was that believable enough, Mr. Director? Could you hear me? Could yeah, you hear I me? I really thought that... Like, oh, James is a sociopath. Gonna, I thought it was really going to be like a thing where it, he was going to be like, it's a stage knife, not real. You know, afterward, just feeling like I was just fucking with you. Um, but that didn't happen. No. And uh, again, I... He brandished that knife. A All of times. I know from watching this yeah. movie is that James Dean seems like a huge fucking shithead. Yeah. Like he seemed like a big <laughs> shithead. Well, I think the his next that was one of his uh, personas for sure. I think the next version of that is sort of a Robert Downey Jr. in the early '90s, being just like hard to work with, constantly wasted on drugs, but still being mm-hmm. this like amazing actor. Uh, unfortunately. Um, no, sorry. Fortunately, he did have <laughs> I mean, a resurgence. No. We did get to see some great acting, um, in like movies like uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and and Waking Life and stuff. And then he's fucking. He is yeah, Tony Scanner St- Darkly. Scanner, Scanner Darkly. Darkly. Sorry. Uh, but we, and then we got to have him for a decade as Tony Stark, the perfect Tony Stark. Perfect. Star- yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um. Which is which is insane, and I'm I'm glad that Robert Downey Jr. was a, was able to turn things around. Now Rob Lowe, huh. he had a he was a similar actor, who had a re- resurgence uh, recently. But everybody forgets that he's banged children on videotape. Everybody sort of was like, yeah, that's fine. We'll you know have, have not children, but underage people. It was sex tape with him and underage people it's uh that's I mean, real listen, and happened i guarantee like i was hard pressed to, to to look up the people that james dean was uh having sex with in this movie well I was yeah like, i'm probably gonna find out that he, these people were all probably fucking teenagers as well and like well, there, it's just like the no i think they were mostly like producer stuff, wasn't it, it well was, they like, just, i think he had like a thing with brando east of, of eden the... the east of eden thing um Julie, Judy, Judy Gardner. Oh yeah, she was a young. She was a child. Where the guys go? She, he's, she's, you know, he, she's. Natalie Wood. Natalie, Natalie Wood. Wood she's yeah. chiseled out of fine granite. And then he's yeah, like, that she's was kind of that's pretty cringe. But that I'm was like, cringe when the producer said that or yeah, whoever it was, the one like eyed man. Off. Yeah. <laughs> the guy with an <laughs> eye patch. You mean? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no way. This guy's a creep. This is gonna be the greatest tale ever told in Hollywood. About teenagers. As soon as he said that, I was like, was it was the first teen movie. That's like got to count for something. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And does it, Rebel does it have cause, to count for something? Rebel Without a Cause is a great film. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Came out in the yeah. year of our Lord 1955 and had uh, Natalie Wood in it, not Judy Gardner. I wrote down here, we get it. It's tragic. He's a tragic <laughs> genius. Now, someone please shut the trumpet up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even like notice this trumpet. I feel like it keeps you up at night. <laughs> it's annoying, man. It's trying to set a there sad is, tone. You know the scene where he goes, where he goes back to his uh, his dad's house to talk to him, and then the stepmom comes out and she's like, "Hello, James. Uh, your father's gone away for a while, but he can't talk to you now." The whole time during that entire interaction, there's a he's like, well, I need to talk to him right now. Like, is he here? He's not here, but, you know, he'll be back in a couple of <laughs> a couple of trumpet notes. He's like, okay, well, you know, just when he comes back, just like tell him that I, I said that I was like here or whatever. Okay, I gotta go. And then like the curtain, like. Why do you even bother looking through the window? Why would he do that? Because it's a fucking dumb movie, Kalen's movie dramatic, sucks. Dramatic irony. 
Why did he even look through the window? Because it's a stupid fucking movie. That's why. About James Dean's dumbass life. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, I got a little... That trumpet really annoyed me. Scratch it right. off. Steve, hit me, hit me with three, three positives that you liked, three negatives you didn't like. Three negatives? Can I hit you with three <laughs> negatives that I did like and three positives that I didn't like? Yes. Because that's basically my that's basically what reviewing is. <laughs> um so three things that I liked about this movie. I thought the cinematog cinematography was pretty good. It was actually quite good. Um they didn't they they worked within the means. It is a TV movie, so they were able to utilize what they had to work with. I thought that, you know, like the camera movement was appropriate and the framing was nice and the lighting was good. Like I never had a moment where I was like, this looks like shit. Like there was never a moment where I watched it and I thought this looks bad. Um, the costume design was pretty on point for me. Um, and the acting was fine. Like I don't, I didn't have an issue with any of the acting except for James Franco's introduction where he's in silhouette and he's coming in and he's like, walking like fucking like his his interpretation like of how james Igor dean almost walks, which i'm like james <laughs> dean did not walk like that in real life he I walks know, like man. that in, in his movies cause, his movements were pretty yeah that's on. a fucking movie jason he's not walking around like that in real goddamn life <laughs> <could've> like <laughs> you think he just walked around like, every picture i've ever Igor seen james from dean frankenstein like... all the time no yeah he's posing for pictures like that, he, that's how he walks around <laughs> and if he walked <laughs> around like that People will be like, you need to wear a back brace. My eyes are too close together. His eyes were pretty close together. They were very close together, um, considering his face was giant. I thought the music <laughs> was shit. The music was terrible. It was overpowering, overbearing, and it sometimes was just like trampling all over a scene that would have benefited from absolutely no music whatsoever. Um, I th thought the editing was poor. It was poor editing. The, they could have edited this in a much more interesting way. Uh, and I think that James Franco's performance in particular, I think that everybody else was doing a fine job for what they were doing, but I think that his was like, when he was having to be in the James Dean mode, he was like super fucking caricaturized, just a cartoon character. When he was just acting normally in like little moments where he's interacting with somebody in a very normal, uh, and like, like not even normal but just like in a, a genuine way yeah. it, it seemed Definitely, fine yeah. but when he's like doing the james dean thing i'm like he's like <laughs> it's just fucking bad it was bad it wasn't good uh and also like jason said anticlimactic man. that fucking end was just atrocious like they could have edited that so much better it could have been like a, a tension ramp to the point that it's just like you hear the car crash it goes black and the fucking credits roll but it's like no and he named gonna... his car little bastard and he goes to the racetrack and he died of natural causes in 2011 yeah. credit i think that it was it was like shot sort of like a scorsese movie in terms of like where they would point the angle and when they would point the angle and like i, I thought it was all very good in that sense but yeah i don't know i know also i just like it didn't do anything to make me like James Dean. It made me think that he's a fucking like shitty guy. Like he seemed like a shithead who was very selfish. Like there was nothing about it being like, what a tortured genius. I was like, no, what a fucking spoiled ass prick who got to Hollywood <laughs> and fucking had a really great time of it. And like, like just kind of squandered it and then died really early. If he didn't die in that car accident, he would have died like two years later doing something even equally as stupid. He, he died just, in a routine traffic accident. Like he would have cars. died at the racetrack like twenty minutes later. <laughs> like, did his car not have brakes? He's like, he must see us. We're coming. Like he, like maybe he was blowing that guy. <laughs> next to him. <laughs> That's why he crashed. That's maybe what happened. Anyway, that felt like my final review. I didn't mean for it to be like that, but it wasn't. No, since so you can save your final review for a few minutes. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to make sure we keep on, on Jason's schedule. But Jason, I am curious to hear, uh, how did you phrase it? The shitty parts that you did like and the good parts that you didn't like? Um, 
we're gonna be way in under because I am just about done talking about this movie. I I I knew that there wasn't gonna be much to say about this, but I want to stress, Kaylin, this was a good selection. Um, Thank you. I the things that I liked about this movie were I'm kind of in the opposite boat. It, I I really liked James Franco's performance. I don't think it was personally i'm not attacking you steve i don't think that it was a, so caricaturized that it was un <clears throat> watchable um, let me respond i'm not saying that, that his performance was terrible the entire time there are very okay. specific moments within the movie where i felt like i was watching like an snl skit and then there are moments where i'm like I'm interested to see what he's going to do here because he's actually acting now and he's not just going. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Like he, like he's sometimes he is doing like an impression. An exaggerate. Of, of... Well, like have you seen Jim Carrey do his James? Yeah, Dean? yeah, of course. Like when he, that's it. Felt like that. That's at where my moments. impression comes from. <laughs> wow, uncanny. <laughs> but sorry, I, I, I'm just saying that like there are lots of moments in this movie where I think that he's doing a very good job and he's not sleepwalking throughout the movie like he does in a lot of other movies. He's acting. But there are also moments in this where he's acting beyond, like way too hard where I'm like, okay, pull it back a little bit. You're like going into a Jim Carrey territory. Here. So that's something like I did, I did like his performance and I did like, um, I did like learning about James Dean for better or for worse. You know, and I think that this is not a learning experience. This well, movie is I didn't not know. I, I wasn't sure about how he died exactly. Unfortunately, the learning that means that I learned something incredibly anticlimactic. Uh, <laughs> but I did learn one thing from this movie. I also just like like it felt good. Like sometimes movies are way too up their own ass, and the benefit of this is that it it's both a a benefit and a. a service a problem that it's a tv movie because it doesn't it never goes all the way something like outland does suck but it goes all the way on everything it does it's over the top it wishes it was star wars it you know what i mean like it it really wanted to it felt like it wanted to be that next breakout science fiction thing it felt like they were trying to like this is going to be the next blade runner this is it we figured out the formula to we got all the elements of blade runner jam it together get sean connery and then it, they just aborted a fetus of just like nightmares <laughs> Jeez, harsh so, sorry it wasn't that bad <laughs> it was fine but this at least knows what it is does what it wants to do to just tell a pretty quick story i just think that james dean should be looked at under a microscope but you're right steve like he existed for such a short period of time that like maybe they wrung everything out and that's why there's no new like it wouldn't be a remake of this but a retelling of this story maybe they wrung well, it's, everything it's a very annoying thing where everybody put him on this pedestal of like imagine what he could have done it's like uh, River Phoenix Yeah. like everybody thought he was going to do great things and then he died tragically at a young age and everyone's like well, imagine what he could have done and I'm like, imagine James Dean was alive now. He'd probably be fucking riddled with dementia and like well, being like, be like, I a, never liked anybody other than like white people. He'd be like 120, <laughs> so I hope he wouldn't yeah. be alive now. But, you know, but like, he could have realistically did, died in like 2004, you know, like, you know, I get it. Right. But what I mean to say is that like, he exists in this sort of like, snow globe of like perfection where everything that he did was golden and then somebody dropped the snow globe and it broke and then like but then they they like made another snow globe and they're like no one will ever break break okay. this one well, every all his like good this. shit is here think about like this uh, marlon brando <laughs> rosebud i didn't even yeah okay that's marlon, not what i was trying to do but marlon cool. brando <laughs> similarly had a very similar career where he was like the teen heart throb and he didn't die tragically they mentioned oh. Marlon Brando in the He just show. got crazier and crazier. He just got yeah. crazier and crazier. And I think that I think that James Dean might have like killed somebody in the seventies or something. You know what I mean? Like he might have had some thing in the eighties where he fucking just went to jail for all the shit. Right. Like one of those prototype cancellations that used to happen where actors just like go away. Where they actually murdered somebody and like had Bill to go Cosby to real jail. Like, raped thirty people. <laughs> you know, like 
Jesus. Well, he did. I know, but I, I don't know. We can't say that James Dean would have done that. No, we I'm don't not, know that. <laughs> I'm not heavily implying that he could. That's why I'm saying Jesus. I'm just saying that, you know, people don't talk about certain actors anymore from that from that era because it was the literal Wild West of Hollywood in the yeah. West. And it was wild. And it wasn't, there were no cowboys, but there were some cowboys. But the cowboys mostly just ate pudding. But doesn't it also kind of suck that, like, they threw that part in the movie where he went to that, uh, like, tent house with those, like, a room full of gay men it's and just I went in there. Know about. And it's we don't, the don't know what happened in there. Because I... nobody knows what happened in there. And, like, we're all, like, he probably fucked around with somebody, probably right? Just some skiing. Maybe a handy. Maybe or maybe he out. didn't, though. Maybe he just yeah. sat down and talked to these guys. Maybe for, like, he was just good company. Could have been. Yeah. Maybe he just went in there and talked for, like, three hours and then went home. And then got a role the next. I don't know, time. but like Hollywood maybe, was, maybe they just loved him. Hollywood was pretty secretly gay and still is, and well, not so much still is. Well, I mean, even still, like pretty, you know, Hollywood in the fifties. Why are they? Why is it so like anti-gay if it's so heavily gay? It's because they're putting forth a persona for straight people. That's what Hollywood is trying to do. Yeah, gotcha. They're they're finally now realizing like oh lots of people are gay and okay with being gay so like now most just, people are gay let's just make gay it. characters be part of all this sexuality now is fun. a is a spectrum and that but spectrum even like is very even like wide. fifteen years ago they were still like I watched Paul today and they were still dropping really offensive terms in that movie and I was like gee whiz <laughs> this isn't even that long ago <laughs> yeah I watched the last forty five minutes of. Um, of the 40 year old virgin we've talked about not wanting to rewatch that and it even had some stuff in it that i was like not even like homophobia just like what are you talking about that's not really a joke we make anymore it was edgy back then it was was on the cusp of people being like oh that's offensive but you know whatever but there are gay people now so just not be super gay about it Anyway, honestly, I don't. I think I've covered all the points I wanted to make about this movie, man. And I know that it's you know we're only just over an hour in. No, I still have perfect. a few notes. Do you but... like it? Oh, I love a short podcast. The so, Stephen, do you have any yeah. other points or notes that you'd like to address before we get to our final thoughts? Um. I roll to ch- childhood. Yes, trauma makes art. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we get it. You had a bad childhood. Bad dads are always the issue and always will be. Men sucked back then and men suck now, today. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they end every scene with him doing something fucking wacko? I get it. He's quirky and weird. We don't just every single scene have him doing something fucking whack. Like every single scene of this movie ends with him doing something whack. Like I'm just like, what the fuck? Or he just like, remember when he's like uh, sitting there with uh, Martin Landau and he gives him a cigarette and he's like, you want to go back to my place or whatever and we'll hang out? And he's like, yeah, sure. And then he'll just like, he's like, like tries to like throw something in his mouth and like just <laughs> doesn't quite do it. And you're like, what the fuck? Or he'll just like when he's renting the the flat with that guy and oh, he's he like jumps, jumps on the bed and then he jumps on the chair and like slides down and he's like lying on the ground. And he's like, I'll take it. Or like he kisses the guy. Like it's always every scene is like ended with him doing something fucking insane. And I'm like, so was he just insane? I don't know. I no one will ever know if he was just insane or if these are all just recounts of people saying like, yeah, he was a little bit weird he did like this weird thing so they just decided to end every single scene with him doing something weird didn't he play I mean, tommy wiseau in the fucking disaster piece movie i'm so fed up movie? with this one so that's <laughs> that you know i think i just wanted to watch james franco play misunderstood actors for his whole <laughs> rest of his career uh i wrote I mean, down the, the dad double sucks the dad double Ooh. sucks. Then I wrote down the dad triple sucks. Because the dad just keeps getting worse and worse here at the movie. Right? So the, the, wrong, the wrong boy died. The wrong kid died. Uh, at least James Franco is not sleep fucking through the performance. We talked about that. This story is very boring. Yes, it is. I agree, Steve. <laughs> Good note. Uh, once he like starts to get into Hollywood, that's when it really kind of like 
like i was just like like the most interesting stuff is when he's like moving back and forth between la and uh new york and he has like weird relationships with people and i'm like oh, okay and he's like st- literally starving and like his glasses are broken and a guy gives him money to fix his glasses Ooh, but instead good, he like, I eats. like that scene. That was he dumb. eats he eats instead of repairing his glasses and he's like yeah but i spent the time eating to memorize the entire script so i don't need to read it anymore and the guy is like me. all right that's fucking kind of cool like yeah like i that would be if I was to give somebody money to re- repair their glasses, and instead of repairing their glasses, they went away and came back and re- remembered the entire yeah, like script. Went the extra mile. That's yeah. super, super impressive. Yeah, I'm surprised that the acting choice or the story choice wasn't that the guy was pissed because it. I feel like in every other movie where something like that happens, the well, that seemed like, like a thing that's probably you're like fired a real forever. Story. You're fired and you're fired again. Again, though, like they're all like he's beautiful like that's one of the other things about this movie is like a lot of his successes were based on privilege of being a beautiful blonde-haired white man something me and kaylin talked about in our review of um uh devil without a cause rebel without a cause and also my one of my critiques about the movie psycho is they the uh, um norman bates fuck i can't remember the actor's name but also Bale? N- no psycho norman oh, 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 oh um and uh kaylin kaylin check your fucking shit psycho is way better than american psycho but, but american psycho is i don't dope. like old horror movies that much um what i'm saying though is they look it's considered like... one of the best movies ever made i know that's <laughs> just fair. so you guys know <laughs> i also hate halloween so i love oh, i'm a dummy um, what I'm saying though is James Dean and the guy that played Norman Bates looked like actors out of time. They looked like like people that would be actors now. Because they're hot, yeah. Like that's the thing. Is, like, <laughs> if you were to put them, well, that's I'm not even joking. Like there are actors and actresses from an era in the past that if you were to place them into movies now and just change their makeup and their wardrobe, they would still look just as good as the people that are in movies now. Because like back yeah. then they didn't really cast based on attractiveness and then there was an era where it's like oh people will go see your movie if people are more beautiful so they started casting more beautiful people and like yeah like now, the 60s in the 60s but and even then, like the, especially into the blockbuster era where you just hire some idiot who can say the lines who's well the 80s is like the and the, the 80s real is like the sort of like of it, yeah. it, that's like the tidal wave crashing on the beach where like everybody's hot like every movie everyone's hot and then the 90s kind of doubled down and then it just it's now like at a point where almost everybody in a movie is hot and, and the shiny old pe- and the old people that are in your movies that are like the less hot people where are, are the paul just, giamatti's of the world sorry paul the, giamatti you're not an attractive the, man the old he's people a great actor. the he's a old people actor. now <laughs> shut up let me talk for a second you cunts <laughs> the old people now are the hot people that are now aged. They're old now, but they're yeah. still kind of hot a little bit. Having Marissa Tomei play Aunt May, perfect casting. So, so hot. <laughs> perfect casting. He if says. If you look at it, as well, he's reading a comic book where old, like Aunt May looks like a fucking like like a fucking Quaker. Also, how the hell is this aunt so old? Shouldn't she be about the same age as his mom? Doesn't matter. Kaylin, why do you care about that? <laughs> That, this is what I bring to the table. I, you know, little, little, little thing. It kind of, it kind of seems like Aunt May was older than his mom. Yeah. Like, well, as far as the comics, that, and the you know when the Sp- I know, his aunt but, was like a grandmother. Kalen, do you know when Spider Man was originally written? The sixties. Sixty four. Do you know how many 62. fucking siblings people's parents had at that time? Ooh, touche. I, I have a grandfather. Oh who had 13 siblings, yeah. which means they were either popping out a baby every nine months, or they like took a couple years off and then had one. They were so be like, There would be like an, an eldest aunt to a, like a newborn baby who was 20 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking crazy. That's I mean, how the old world was. Irish, your Irish twins means you were born nine months apart. <laughs> 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 but also, that that's true. You could literally have... Like, um, doesn't it have to be like 10 or 11 months at least or something? No, no you right. can no, literally no, have no, a no. baby and then get pregnant like the next like day, like the day. next Don't day. you have to wait like a month or something? Doesn't I don't should know, have maybe to pre- medically you I mean, have to, you but should. biologically <laughs> you don't. Bio- bio- biologically, the if you get pregnant, you get pregnant, and that's that. 
You're fucking pregnant now. Hope, hopefully it's Remember not that show where happened? it was like the those people that lived on like a fucking farm and they had like 21 kids or whatever? The Little House on the Prairie? No, I'm talking about a reality show on TLC that was like on for a few years when I was in high school <laughs> where they were just like, we got a compound and you know, we all have kids here and like but the Octomom? Are you thinking of not the Octomom? They had they had it was called like nineteen oh, and counting. Or oh yes, someone. yeah, nineteen and counting, and then it was like twenty and counting, season two, twenty yeah. and counting, <laughs> twenty one and counting. And the dad that. was like, oh, 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 "Well, you're pregnant again," and the mom's like, "Yes, I am." I'm like, I can't stop. And I'm like, pushing that, babies out. What is happening here? Stop. I remember. Um, <laughs> I saw the only episode of Sister Wives I think I ever saw was the law was coming down pretty hard on them. Like it's it was illegal for the sis to be a more like to have multiple wives and it's like these my the law's coming down on us pretty hard. You got to stay at your homestead and then he's like secretly I got a new wife a brewing. <laughs> <laughs> She's only got eight kids. Her name's Kate. These are different shows and this this oh. Kate and Jake Kate and Mate plus, Kate. plus Nate. Play Kate mate plus eight. John and Kate John plus and Kate Nate. Plus it's Nate. like a show about polygamy. That, that's on. That's on Showcase. That's a. That's yeah. a program on Showcase. Um. So. Anyway, it was more interesting when James Dean was poor, and then when he got rich, I was like, now his shitheadness is just him being kind of a dick. Like when he was poor, it was quirky and interesting. Counterpoint. And then as soon as he got money, I was like. Ugh, this guy sucks now. Counterpoint. I love that. I love that shit. I love seeing <laughs> new rich act like dickheads in movies. Like I don't like it in real life, but it, in that new money, the, the main character like got his comeuppance finally, and not the comeuppance where he gets killed, but the comeuppance where he fucking finally reaches his rainbow. Uh, I'm into it. He never reached his rainbow in this movie. No, he died tragically at 24 uh, in a car crash with a Ford um, while driving. With his mechanic, which is kind of cool, that he took his mechanic with him. He's like, oh, so aren't you going to drive this car? Also, like, why is that guy not more in the movie? If his mechanic is such a good friend of his that he's going to take his mechanic across the country with him on a road trip. I don't know. Why the fuck is that guy not here? Wasn't it more like a necessity to have him with him? I don't know. No, they didn't explain they're... that either, Kalen. <laughs> Maybe I'm you're saying. right, but I don't know based on the movie that I watched. <laughs> I'm sure there would be mechanics there. He has has have his mechanic, I guess. But he has other friends, right? Like, or maybe he didn't have any friends. I don't fucking know. This movie doesn't explain. He got he fell in love with some fucking woman who he wanted to marry, and she wanted to marry him. And then the mom said no, and then Jack Warner, the studio head, was like. You're not marrying her, all right? Now stop dreaming, kid. Now You're gonna someday, be in my next picture. Someday we'll have a video game where every character I've ever bought will be in the same video games, kids. It's like, what? Do you, what's a <laughs> well, video I game? Jack Warner was a character, and he was like, ah, <laughs> got bubble gum stuck in his butt. Yeah. And when he sat on that bubble gum, the super bubble move gum. is ashing ash on you. Yeah. Or farting a big bubble gum balloon at you, like. Perfect. It would make no Pop nobody funny. would know nobody's seen this fucking movie. They would have no idea why that is like that. Uh, I wonder if that actually happened or if that was just like a he would probably do this. He seemed like kind a troll. Moment. He seemed like a grade A J- James Dean, they make James Dean out to be a grade A troll in this movie. Yeah, he is. Like the or, prototype or movie, yes. the prototype troll. Which is why I didn't like him. He seems like a fucking shithead. Like like a shit disturbing little fucker like i kind of hate him like the most of the movie i'm like this guy is and i kind of no good i kind of liked him i like i like his little fucking with the machine what about when he slaps his girlfriend i hated that i didn't like that he she hit him and he hit her back and then they fucked and And then he told her to open it yeah (laughs) her mouth hated it (laughs) that that was confusing i felt gross and then they have sex and i'm like he probably didn't have sex he probably assaulted sexually that yeah. seems like that's maybe what happened there also who names their kid P- Pierre Pierre Le- Leon or sorry oh, yeah. um, Annabella Pierre, Angelique. Pierre yeah Angelique. I looked her up she was a she was a, an actress out of time as well where she 
uh, was very attractive back then. It like uh, them together. There's pictures of them together from that era, and he looks like a goofy buffoon. Like he doesn't look hot next to her. His eyes are too close together. He's got a big face. <laughs> I'll be okay. back in two seconds. You guys keep going. One he second. only looks attractive when he's like certain he's... angles of his face directly on, and then also like when he's next to the god awful looking men of the era. True, yeah, which was every man. Every man. Every man. Because they all fucking like rubbed tobacco and nicotine on their faces before they went to sleep. Like, it's true, but uh, not for nothing. They'd be sleeping with a cigarette in their mouth. Like, mm-hmm. Not for nothing, the acting <laughs> actors and, and musicians, like they actually were their 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 lot in life and and the, where they got in life was based on their actual talent so you actually saw talented people who didn't just happen to not be attractive and nowadays it's like people who are like pretty good at acting but they're fucking smoking hot you know what i mean like they're pretty good at singing but they're fucking they're one of the one direction boys uh yeah no i think that talent nowadays is underutilized um particularly in you know i work in an artistic field and i see people of great talent all the time and it's kind of upsetting when you see somebody who's super talented who's not reaching the heights that they could but at the same time there is something to be said about determination that's true and, and then but you do also get some actors that come along like margot robbie who's like she's fucking hot as fuck and she's a good actor like like i well, i would say the same thing about chris hemsworth he's uh, chris fucking hemsworth, hot as hell he's and he's range. also a very good he's actor. got incredible range yeah so it's like there there are there is and and there are very good actors who aren't like you know matt barry he's not the world's most attractive man but he's an incredible actor Incredible, he's the best incredible... actor in New York City. He's the toast of London, <laughs> in fact. Yes. Um, yeah. But Sorry, Matt also, Barry. Like... You're the most attractive man I've ever seen. I apologize <laughs> if you're watching this in 20 New years. New York City. <laughs> uh, I think he's doing all right as well. Like he's not hurting for jobs. Like he's no. doing a pretty good job of his life. Um, but yeah, James Dean. I don't know, man. Like when I watched those movies and like he was kind of turning the angle of stage actory stuff to what we consider now to be Hollywood actor stuff where like, he's a good close up performer. Yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. in the time there were still people who were like only silent and uh, stage performers who were just like super like, we live in an era. We live in an era where we saw the, the golden age of tell or the, the platinum age of television like the after the golden age of television and there was still a clear divide between movie actors and television actors and we saw them cross over and merge and now you know hbo tv shows are indistinguishable from movies as far as casting goes and i think this was an era where we had um the rise of the like the teen drama you know and they wanted these young hot actors to be the next hollywood stars and starlets right so it, it it was a pivotal time in history and but there are so many other people from this era that like just are have just died off over the last decade you know like that had perfectly good careers you know yeah and uh i think you, you make a good point that like i don't think james dean would have survived longer than that car crash if it wasn't that just based it on some his other antics throughout this nonsense. movie i'm like this guy probably would have like climbed a water tower and like falling off it or something you know? broken all <laughs> yeah he seems like an idiot basically like he seems <laughs> like a fucking idiot but like Does yeah. that what yeah you have you seen like tiktok like the island boys like he's one of the island boys in my opinion oh he's <laughs> That's not how I bad. come on Whoa. you never know if Whoa. james dean had an island boy hit and was just Whoa. like that wasn't spent- a hit he they spent make, they so didn't, much money on race cars. They didn't fucking even, idiot. Yeah, He's a fucking idiot. Everybody money on race cars. The Island Boys did not. They didn't even make a song out of that. They just. It's just them singing in a pool. They, yeah, but what I'm saying is that I could also see the Island Boys climbing a water tower and falling off and dying, and I could see James Dean doing that as well. <laughs> the Island Boys are almost are already like broke immediately. 
Like they yeah, got Michael Kelso is hilarious. That was that did happen on that '70s show, and you know, <laughs> Ashton Kutcher kind of a similar doofus, but you know, he made a great career for himself. There were no handlers um, back then in the '50s. Now, now all the stars have handlers to make. Well, sure they were they trying it. Well, it was like the head of the studio, the guy who owns yeah, the whole studio, he was, the was trying to handle her. <laughs> yeah, he was like, "All right, just calm down." Like I, the one one scene that I really liked was when he's like. like I love you and I hate you. And he's like, I hate you and I hate you. I was like, yes, yeah. <laughs> a very good line. And I hope that's real. But if it's not real, then good job writers, but bad job for making me think that something that can be real. Like if it's not real, then fuck it. Should, does that bring bio up final thoughts? Yeah. Let's take this bad boy home. Okay. Let which, me just finish my notes. Like... I only have a couple more. All right, Steve, finish your notes and then bring us into your final thoughts, please. And thank you. Hollywood is a vile place. I've made <laughs> Thanks, Captain by, Obvious. By Eyepatch Man. Uh, As we continue to enjoy your product. <laughs> the entire storyline between him and Pierre is bullshit and stupid and annoying. And it didn't go anywhere. It didn't lead anywhere. It didn't tell me anything about him as a person. Except that he's willing to slap a woman in the face. That's the only thing it told me. Uh, the music is melodramatic and corny as hell. I've already talked about that. Turn signals were invented that day. <laughs> this is what I said. <laughs> it's funny because I'm a cyclist and th- I used that turn signal to turn left. Like I used that turn signal literally today to turn left. So uh, we're yeah, going to add turn I, signals. To I bicycles. assume that James Dean died and they're like, maybe we should have some sort of signal to make sure <laughs> that other cars know when we're turning. Uh, and then after that, I, I, I wrote, that seemed like a very pretty easy accident to avoid getting into. Yeah, just turn. Just slow, yeah. hit the brakes. Or hit the brakes, yeah. But anyway, I don't know if that's how it happened. Maybe no one was paying attention. Maybe blowjobs were happening. Maybe the guy turned suddenly. They were suddenly. somehow Who blowing knows? each other while, they were, while he was <laughs> driving. They both were doing hand jobs, and they both had their heads back on the seat. <laughs> I'm about to climb back. Yeah. All right, those are all my notes. Well... Lead us into your final thoughts. Me? Yep. All right. <laughs> you James asked Dean. For it. <laughs> uh, James Dean. He b- was born in 1931 and died in 1955 at the age of 24 years old. Uh, I'm sure that he would have went on to do several more movies where people milked his lemon-shaped head into a vat of film acid and smeared his weird looking face all over the screen to good writing but i don't know if this movie gave me the impression that he was a an amazing actor and i have seen all of james james dean's movies i i was made to watch them at some point in my life and when i I go back and watch a lot of these movies it all seems very uh theatrical in terms of stage performance and i think that he was changing it a little bit at the that time because it was still you know a a mesh between old actors and new actors and he was finding a way to bring it in on his face and like act with his face and act subtly and emotionally which is great and it is a, a supremely important part of film history because imagine we were still watching movies to this day as though they were all just plays. <laughs> we would be watching Iron Man and be like, <clears throat> like, <clears throat> like super far away, just, <clears throat> and then it would be like his thing would open and you would just never see Robert Downey Jr. face. But um, I don't particularly like biopics, which I've said before in this exact podcast, but I think that this one is an example of a particularly bad one Uh, i think it checks off all of the boxes of he didn't die from an overdose no but he died of stupidity which is the same thing (laughs) (laughs) an overdose is dying of stupidity and dying in a car crash is also stupidity to me um he sorry the movie itself is fine like i'm not going to say don't watch it it's an it's an r.a movie it's very watchable and if you if you want to know a little bit about what people think james dean was like then that's what this movie does but i really doubt that that's accurate you can probably watch a documentary about james dean that is far more accurate than this movie uh this is a trick 
it tricks people into thinking they're watching art, <laughs> which they're not. They're watching a glorification of a human being. They're watching uh, somebody masturbate to James Dean on screen. It's <laughs> fucking not a good movie. James Franco does a very good job of acting, as do all the other actors. But while I watch this movie, all I'm thinking about is something like Walk Hard, which is a complete spoof and satire of this genre of film, which is this, this is at the tail end of it before they decided to try and change the formula a little bit. But it's still clinging on to the 90s and 80s rendition of what a biopic was and that's why it very much feels like one of those and there are lots of those that exist that are much better than this one um again i'm not going to say never watch this if you're very into james dean or if you're very into james franco i guess then maybe you'll, <laughs> you'll like this i didn't like it i didn't like it to a point that i was aggravated while watching it um the music is horrendous the <laughs> but the cinematography is good it's well filmed it looks good it looks nice unless you're watching it on 480p as jason did <laughs> or is it, it looks like even, a youtube video might have even, like, yeah, it might have even been 360p so yeah no but it, it does look <laughs> it does look good the costumes are good um but yeah there's there's lots of things that i that i don't like about it but this also gave james franco a nice kind of walking pass through Hollywood for the rest of his career that he's still been utilizing because he did, he did a very good job um, in the moments that he was acting when he was doing his characterized James Dean, it felt like an impression and it was very bad. But when he's just kind of like being James Franco as James Dean, I liked it. I didn't like when he was being James Dean. <laughs> uh, if I was to have to rate this, you know what? Fuck No. I don't recommend this for anybody that doesn't like biopics because it's going to, you're not going to like it at all. If you love James Dean, you'll like it. If you love James Franco, you'll like it. But if you don't like biopics, don't ever fucking watch this movie. But if I had to give it a rating, <laughs> I would give it somebody uh, putting a hand signal out to turn right and then turning right, left. <laughs> that's what I give it. All right, that's pretty succinct. Are you gonna follow that up, Jason? <laughs> I mean, that was a pretty good, that was a pretty good final thought. Um, my like honestly, great TV movie, abysmal like the theatrical film, and I know that's not what it was, but like, I feel like they wanted it to be that. And uh, it was a movie that I couldn't help but like, what's going to happen next? Because everything just happens in in an order. Like you just, it's one, like there's no like jumping back and forth like ideas. It's like this thing happened and then this thing happened. You might have to remember something from before a couple of times. Like his dad, like it, like his relationship with his father. But honestly, it's just like. But those things a, are like stomped into your head. The it had good pacing. You might have to remember but that is sort of the problem since this movie needed to be twice as long to really have any real impact. Um, I know I hate long movies traditionally, but this is easily the best James Dean movie. And that isn't really saying much. I looked up, I wanted, I was curious about like what else has been made about him. And I think there's, like I said, there's like one eighties movie about James Dean and maybe it's better. Maybe we go track that down, but it doesn't have James Franco in it. Um, they could have stuck some more budget on it, even for television. Um, and they skip over a lot of like the in-between stuff that would have been interesting to see. Like I said, like some of the the acting stuff would have been cool. Really want to know what happened in that apartment. Even if it was even if it wasn't like overtly like homophobic or overtly not that I want to see homophobia, but like even if it didn't like, I just wanted to see what they were implying fully. But like you said, it kind of had to be based on something. Can I, it was a sorry, can I just say one thing that I forgot about during the entire movie, which is that I think that the director of the movie that kind of got him into it was also gay and he was very comfortable with that guy because yeah. there's that moment where he calls over uh, Pierre and then he's like, call over that Spartan over there. And it's, he, he seems like more your type anyway, which like implied to me that director. Yeah, that the director was probably gay, and like he's just like friends with him or whatever. Well, everybody in Hollywood's gay, I presume, to some degree. Even back then, like I think that was where it was a gay mecca, sort of. Uh, yeah, it's, performative it's, nature. 
that uh, what's that show? Uh, what's that show that's uh, uh Ryan Hollywood? Murphy? I think it's called Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's good. It's very it's good. Like very, I like yeah. Ryan Murphy's like schlocky like writing. It's very consumable. But uh, I digress. This movie was impossible to find for us. Um, Kalen owns it on DVD. I had to watch it on YouTube, and, and Steve managed to find it on a streaming site. But I've torrented most of the movies that aren't on streaming sites with great ease, and I couldn't find this. I found one that got to 46%, and it didn't have, I knew it was going to fail because it just didn't have the like ratio. Um, yeah. Not that I've ever... I could only find it to rent on a non-Canadian website. And I was yeah. like, well, I can't watch this, I guess. Amazon Prime USA had it for like 10 bucks, and I wasn't going to... That's that nope. I wasn't willing to go to that length. Um, but that's because we found out while we were doing our prep for this movie that it was a TV movie, and it disappeared from time um, because of that fact. Um, as a TV movie, compared to some of the... Fu- like, I when I go to my dad's at Christmas time, we put like the hallmark movies are just on because they're christmas movies and my dad's wife likes christmas movies so i've seen a lot of really bad dumb just because it's fun to just have it on it's christmas themed we're sitting around we're not really watching it anyway and there's one called hats off to you and i always think of hats off to you and it's about this big this small town girl who has to deal with a big town guy who she runs a hat store christmas hat store how the fuck does that sustain and uh that had better um cinematography than this movie in my opinion but i watched in 480p so who knows i give this now i'm sorry i suspect that jason doesn't know what cinematography is after he said that i absolutely do uh but i do give this movie as a tv movie i would give that movie like a 2.5 if this is a four this movie is a four as a tv movie as a as like a movie it's like a two unfortunately out of five so i i feel bad about giving it a low because i did like i enjoyed this movie but it's objectively bad and it's crazy that this is the only james dean movie that really exists and it's crazy that people talk about this movie all the time on the internet and stuff it's a weird anomaly of a thing that was created especially where it's one of james franco's like first real things after i think it it goes freaks and geeks and then this on his imdb honestly so, I think yeah. it's also because, like, like you said, it's one of the only biopics about James Dean, and it's also starring James Franco. And it Who is the perfect the casting. Yeah, and it is, it's also, James. It's also that's that's why it's perfect. But it's also the role that <laughs> kind of elevated James Franco to the point that he was in Spider Man like a year later. Yeah, like he he yeah. With the he same, was up like and coming, and he came, hair, and now he just can't stop down. coming. Because I was thinking about that the whole time I'm watching this movie. I'm like, he has the same fucking weird, like, it's not blonde, but it's, like, brown, but, like, shiny brown. It's like a golden kind like, of thing. Yeah, like, golden hair. And he has that same hair in Spider-Man. Because, they, you know, they're trying to make him look like Norm or Harry Osborn. Anyway, that's it for me on this Didn't movie. did Harry Osborn have, like, weird wave he, They couldn't, heads? yeah. Like comics, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they would have like ever black, done that. Red, black, red thing. Yeah, I don't know how that they was would like have a ginger that. with their hair like pulled back, like to the point that it's slicked, but it's still like wavy. That's how I always kind of like uh, look at that. That's interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. Kalen, why don't you take us home, buddy? Allow me to take us home. So before I do, I as we were talking, I had this thought. I wonder. <clears throat> how our perception would have been if we watched this as a TV movie, AKA with commercials, um, where it has those. So like, cause we kind of talked about how it like, it, it's like, you know, it, it kind of tells this, 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 this story, then it goes, tells this story or whatever. And as a, as a whole straight, like straight through watch you know not necessarily the best movie but as a tv movie i wonder if maybe it being edited that way with commercials in it so you have those pauses it kind of like those pauses create a certain effect where it it, you know what i mean like there's it's like a gap like a like a time gap or whatever almost and I'm wondering if maybe that might kind of add to the viewing pleasure of I'll, it. I'll answer your question, Kalen. Yeah. I hate commercials. 
I hated too. commercials when they were a thing in my life. I hated when they were being. I hated them when they were being phased out. Force fed. Yeah. Any time, any time that I have to see them now, it's agony. I'll tell you right now, if I had to watch this movie with commercials in two thousand and one right. or in twenty twenty two. I would have right. hated. I would have hated it, and it wouldn't have added that. But the let only me ask time, you this. The, but the only what well, I see what you're saying, and the only time that something like that adds intrigue or adds, um, like adds suspense is is yeah. now where they've gone back to putting shows out weekly versus right. putting out the whole fucking series in one go. I do right. like waiting a week to watch the next episode because I right. I I, I don't want to find myself trapped watching fucking six hours of tv of the same thing in a row where right. commercials have never done that for me personally that's all i'm saying fair have you have you ever do you recall watching a tv show that you have watched on tv with commercials versus watching it straight through and have you noticed having a different feeling about it sure but commercials in my lifetime have always been an inconvenience they've never added yeah, anything fucking to trying the to game. sell you shit it's annoying it's not even that it's like just show me the whole show i don't want to i'm gonna buy what i'm gonna buy i don't it's it's me personally <laughs> it's me personally i get why advertising exists but i've never in my lifetime been like sick i'm gonna reflect on the last scene now during these commercials right I'm, it's always get me through these commercials so i can just watch more show what are you talking about and then when in the early 2000s when commercials were basically deleted by the ability to download your tv or like tivo or fast forward TiVo, commercials yeah. I, I don't watch very many commercials unless i'm absolutely forced to and it's always yeah. an inconvenience yeah those fucking 5 10 15 second ads on youtube uh, no yeah but imagine it was 15 minutes which is what it used to be on these tv movies Dude. Yeah, true, exactly. Because an was, hour yeah, and a half exactly. movie. Yeah. So this movie they have is like, a long period of the movie and then a long period of commercials. Yeah. Th- I, yeah, this this movie would have been probably about three hours. Yeah. Because they would have like well, no, it would several have been, it would have been two it would have been a two hour block of TV for it was a, no. a nine no, but it's three hours. Hour so it would have been, if it was a if it's a TV movie, it would have been three hours long and they would have had like ten minute chunks of because they would have like broken it up into the acts. And then there yeah. would have been a, a, a large chunk. I remember watching Star Wars when I was a kid, and it on was TV? three hours long. And they would Isn't it literally it would be fifteen long? whole That's minutes. No, Star Wars of, is like, two hours of, of commercials. Um, That's a two-hour movie. I watch three hours. I long. watch pro wrestling a few times a week on network television, and I'll tell you right now that Monday Night Raw is a three-hour television show. And because of commercials and it's on a sports channel, so they show you like the sports updates. Okay, it yeah. can be as low as two hours and twenty minutes. Which is insanity. Which it's is not ins- a movie though. No. <laughs> I know that. I get that, but I'm just saying and that's old. They don't now they do things where they truncate scenes and the credits are sped up and like they can fit yeah. they fit it down. But I know what you mean. Like I remember watching movies as a kid and taping them and having them taped and they would be like two and a half or three hours. Well I, I remember getting like you know when you my dad got like the crazy cable or whatever, like when crazy cable became a thing and you get the giant remote that where like there's like a thousand but- buttons on it but you only press six <laughs> of them. And like it would give you the time lengths of shit. It'd be like Star Wars starting in twenty five minutes, and then it would show how long it was. And like Star Wars is not three hour. Like why is it this long? And then you'd watch it, and then it would just be like literally fifteen minute chunks where you they it was like they're giving you a moment to be like go to the bathroom, go make some popcorn. If you need to talk to somebody, call call them on the telephone. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable. Wild. But also the amount of time that would pass in between those commercials yeah. was not a regular TV amount. Like it wouldn't be like exactly. 10 yeah. minutes and then a commercial break. I and think that and, I agree would, like, with you though and it. disagree with you where this was probably on prime time. And I think this, this would have been in a two hour time slot because it was 2001 and cable and satellite and truncated shit did exist. And I think this would have been in a two hour time slot. I do agree with you though, because on a Saturday afternoon in 1995 on like Global, they would put Star Wars in a three-hour time slot. Absolutely. All right. Well, reasons. you know what? 
I'll I'll yield. It's fine. Hey. I I'm not saying I agree, but I'm not saying I disagree because I don't fucking know. I'm and agreeing. You as know well, what? Neither remember, do you. I do remember. <laughs> so let's get the fuck out. Yeah, this let's. Is a dumb conversation. It's not. Dumb. How long do you think is, commercials all, all were in 2000? I'm curious as to what this would have felt like if it was watched. This would have been worse. I would have stopped watching it. If it I don't was on think TV this night and I, had to, I, I would have been like the commercial would have come up and I would have found something yeah, else. That you I would have changed the about. channel. That's that's yeah. part of what I'm saying too. Yeah, but then you change back. It's you're prime like, time. Okay, I got a couple minutes. I'll go watch something and then come no, back. I was not interested enough in this movie while watching it as an adult that if I was a kid, I would have been like, I'll find some. I'll watch like a repeat of Survivor over watching this fucking. <laughs> I think if movie. we were thirty, if we were thirty-five plus in two thousand and one, this might have been an interesting movie because our history with film yeah if i was 30 in 2001 i would have probably been very well versed in james dean exactly movies. but exactly. i uh, ugh, no anyway anyway I a fuck i'd rather watch the biography of liam neeson when he became an alcoholic and peed himself all the time in public that, that sounds amazing more interesting. I, that I thought movie. that was fergie taken four no she was high on meth and pissed herself and, on and he was an alcoholic yeah but he also was going through a lot of tough times i would like to see a, a biopic of liam mason that's what about like one actor man? that i would what about what he was in dark man right he oh, was I dark man said, i thought you said what about duck man and i was like no, that was what? jason Alexander. what about darkwing duck that was uh, uh yes he was oh, in dark man we should duck do man. dark man that's the thing, right? Yeah, Jason Alexander's duck man. You put you your down, down, you thrust your pelvis. You thrust your pelvis. Oh, I haven't uh. thought about that in a fucking 20 years. Kalen, it's your time for final thoughts. Let's take this home. We can talk about whatever. I know, but I'm letting you guys interrupt. Hey, did you see this one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, the a few things I want to mention. One, okay, actually, no, I'll start with this one. So there's a line in it. Everyone wants to meet me except you. There, there's the what's at the core of this movie, like the whole daddy issue thing or whatever, um, is kind of a um, is a theme that kind of that, that's you know struck a chord with me that kind of stuck with me, sticks with me or whatever. Uh, given my personal uh, background and upbringing and all that stuff, and I can. There's a part of me that can understand, uh, and slash I do it. I do I, I do weird shit for ver- various reasons. Um, sometimes it's just to make people like it's like, what like, all right. Let me gather my thoughts here. <sighs> so when you see something in a TV show or a movie, and it's like weird and shit, it's like oh but it's in a TV show or a movie that doesn't happen in real life. I want to be a person that brings that sort of thing to real life or whatever. Sometimes like I'll do things just for the, the theatrics of it. Sometimes um, there's, there's, you know, there's an aspect, there's a, there's a part of me or whatever that is kind of looking for approval or whatever that, you know, maybe I didn't have as a kid or something like that. Not to get too deep and shit into like, you know, personal shit or whatever, but like the, there's elements of of this story that um that like kind of dig deep at at uh you know my soul or whatever (laughs) um so i can totally see how like doing some of the outlandish things or or you know the like the acting out that uh is portrayed uh and you know the mythos and the stories and everything behind james dean Part of me can kind of understand that to to a certain extent. Um, the you know the whole kind of looking for approval and everything. Um, grow it like in in my younger days or whatever, and you know that person not being in my life, and uh, not understanding why, and like n- like as a like if I was a, a father or whatever, I couldn't imagine not wanting to be, even if, even if, you know, who it was with, you know, maybe you don't have a good relationship with or whatever, but the, the offspring of, of, of that is still a part of you. And I can't imagine not wanting to have some sort of 
uh, interaction or, or whatever with, with them, with, you know, with your, with your offspring or whatever, your child. And so like, there's, there's those kind of elements of this, of this story kind of like strike, like kind of hit me, hit, hit my, hit my, uh, hit my little, my little heart, my little heart nerves or whatever and stuff like that. And, your boom, and boom, then also boom. just, what? Oh, nothing. <laughs> And, uh, and just, yeah, acting out and, and being kind of like, uh, you know, sometimes being a class clown or whatever, sometimes being an asshole, um, you know, kind of wanting more or whatever. And, um, like part of me wanted to reach a certain level of success only to turn around and be like, yeah, look what I did without you or whatever kind of thing right um so there the 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 story the, the like the story behind you know what this this film is kind of talking about does kind of like you know kind of stick with me in that regard which and then also james franco's uh performance uh i will say that i did enjoy quite a bit there steve to your point there were aspects of exaggeration but not so much that I, it took me out of it. I still enjoyed it at the end of the day. Um, all that being said, I give this a three movies out of... Oh, I wish there was one more from him. Of one million movies. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, well, I'm... But all that being said... For Jason and Steven. Oh, I'm man. Kidding. I feel like I want to respond to your whole thing that you just said. Oh, sorry. Was very ahead. nice and sweet. No, I don't no, need to. I don't... Well, Kalen, that's... That's very... Intelligent. Yeah, the way that you The way good. that you analyze this movie is yeah. means I get to it. me that this movie means something to you. And, like, it doesn't mean something to me, but it does mean something to you, which is respectable and i you know like as much as i didn't enjoy this movie when we were talking about it earlier before the podcast i was like i'm sure some people like this for some reason and the reason that you like it is far more personable and interesting it makes me more interested in you than it does in the movie itself like i am like if you connected this hard to this movie then i want to know more about you than i this, this care is, about this movie itself. but this is why i connected so hard to it too like because of kaylin's connection to james dean and this movie and then us watching it on this very show and that's why i got so much out of it as well you know like the, it not for nothing like this was a good this was a good selection it's not a great movie, yeah. but it, it's. A... I liked our banter. Yeah, no, yeah. See, that's the thing. The movie itself, uh, but what came from it, great. This was one of our best, like most intelligent episodes. I think. I honestly like. It was one of our most. We're all here. We're all here. Or get used to it. Episodes. <laughs> Sorry, I heard us saying that on a thing I was watching. I mean, I can say it if I want to. <laughs> I'm allowed. Man, I'll say it, man. <laughs> I'll say the Q word. I'll say it right now. It's also not a word you're not allowed to say. I know, I know. Tec- I'm... Anyway. Kalen, what were you saying about uh, for who and for whom? Kalen, we love you, buddy. We, we love, love you, you brother. Lot. Thank you for bringing this to the table. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you both. I'm sure I'm, I'll follow it up next week with some masturbatory notes. <laughs> well, I, all I know is that I'm going to go have sex with two Rona Quinsons. <laughs> <laughs> Check out that Steve sandwich. And on that note, for Jason and Steven, I'm Kellen. And for, for Jason and for Kalen, I'm Steven. And for Jason and for Jason and for Kalen and for Kalen and for Steven and for Steven. I thought he was going to say all his names. I'm Jason. And uh, Kalen, do you have any questions you'd like to ask us? I just got to know one thing. Hmm. Just wait. Tell us. Tell us that you... Oh, we all have to do it? Hey. Did you see this one? Hey, did you see this one?
Did you see it? Did you see this one? Did you? And that's this week's episode, folks. Thanks for joining. Come back next week. We'll be here. And we'll be Submit here. Submitted for your approval of the Midnight Society. I call this story James Bean. <laughs> Yo, is, are you afraid of the dark streaming on anything?